the Holy Spirit uses holy priests to sanctify the church. The evil spirit uses evil priests to bring down the church founded by Jesus Christ. Consequently, there must be sanctity in the human channels to cooperate successfully with God for the salvation and sanctification of souls. To a priest who wants to qualify himself for apostolic work, there is one thing he must acquire. How I've stated this, repeated it, insisted on it with my priests and priests to be students. Sanctity. Either you are a holy priest or you should not be ordained. And let's be honest, it's more than just being an example of, say, humility, obedience, chastity, prayer, and piety. I will quote my father in God, St. Ignatius, on the relationship between holiness and the apostolate. Says Ignatius, the law which God has made to govern the process of generation and the natural order obtains proportionately in the supernatural order as well. Philosophy, what we see around us, should it be size, the general or universal causes, such as the elements, a special an immediate cause of the same species. Same species is further needed so that the animal or human being produced may be of like kind with the agent producing. Animals reproduce animals. Human beings reproduce human beings. In the same way, I'm quoting Ignatius, it is the will of divine wisdom that the immediate cause involved be himself humble, patient, and filled with charity. Consequently, says Ignatius, who would make others holy, be holy yourself first. Although great learning and great virtue are to be sought after, yet virtue must also and always be given the first place. Unquote Ignatius. Holy priests reproduce holy people. No one else does. There is such a thing as spiritual reproductivity. The celibacy to which priests bind themselves, dear Lord, is not meant to prevent them from having offspring. On the contrary, their personal holiness is the most powerful means they have for becoming more reproductive. Well, I know I've told I don't know how many audiences. Dating a wonderful girl. She had the wedding date set. I waited till three days before entering the novitiate to tell her. The one meal I paid, oh, I feel paid well for the meal. She did not eat. Stupidly, I told her, 
I'm going to meet the Jesuits next Wednesday. This was Sunday night. I wanted to be a father. And let me be as clear and strong as I can. Fatherhood and motherhood does not come, does not come, does not mean bodily reproductivity. Am I clear? Jesus Christ reproduced himself as only the living God incarnate could reproduce himself. As I tell parents, and especially those who have several children, do you know why you brought these children into the world? Well, they have a family, they tell me. Well, thanks to bring children to heaven. And you don't have to reproduce yourself physically to bring children into heaven. Finally, how would I will spend most time Why and how is Mary a model of faith for priests? Knowing priests so well, never did I dream when in 1949 I was sent by my superiors to Rome to get a doctorate in theology. Never did I dream that some 30 of my fellow Jesuits would be in studies with me for two years. All older men, 40s and 50s. So we asked them, what are you doing here? You must have your doctorate in theology. And they said, we sure have. But the Pope, Pius XII, closed our seminaries and sent us to Rome. And they were angry. Sent us to Rome to recover our Catholic faith. In the last 50 years, I have learned a great deal about the priesthood. One thing I surely understand, what priests mainly need is a deep, very deep, very, very deep faith. A faith like that of the Mother of God. That's why our closing reflections are on why and how is Mary the model of faith for priests. We all need models to imitate. And there is such dire need of a model for us to follow. First, for us priests, a model to follow of the faith that was purchased with the blood of so many martyrs is to grow in the hearts of believers and propagate among the millions who have not yet even been evangelized. And the one model that we all most need, and with emphasis, we priests, is Our Lady. As we know, Jesus Christ, being the living God in human form, 
did not have the virtue of faith nor the virtue of hope to claim that Jesus had faith and hope is to be an historian heretic denying that Jesus is a divine person. He saw the face of the living God from the first moment of his conception in Mary's womb. Now, more specifically on the subject which we are speaking on. First, why is Mary especially appropriate as a model of faith for priests? It is not difficult to answer why. The reason is Our Lady's close intimacy. No words can begin to describe that intimacy with Jesus Christ. An intimacy comparable to the intimacy that a priest is expected to have and cultivate in virtue of his office. The last prayers I say at night are to Our Lady. The first prayers on giving up in the morning are to Our Lady, beginning with the memorale. Where can we begin to describe Mary's nearness to her divine son? And how this word nearness needs to be more deeply and clearly understood. Sure, he was near her because he was within her during the nine months of his conception in her womb. He was near her as the one she brought forth at Bethlehem, the one she nursed and clothed and fed in infancy. He was the one she spoke with and cared for and talked about all through his days at Nazareth. But I go on, the one we are sure who was constantly on her mind during his public life, the one she accompanied as much and as closely as the Roman soldiers would allow her, accompanied on his way to Calvary, and the one who was allowed to be under the cross and be spattered by his blood as he died on Good Friday. As we turn to a priest, is not or should not his life be so much like Mary's and his closeness to the physical Christ in the Eucharist that's why I made sure that in giving this conference, our Lord will be present here, the Son of Mary, who is the Son of the living God, just feet away from the mouth of this sinner who is speaking. It is the lips of a priest that bring Christ down on the altar. It is his words that make possible the renewal of Christ's death and the sacrifice of the Mass. It is the hands of a priest that handle the sacred elements which contain the person of Christ, the Son of Mary. Only God knows, only God knows the terrible damage to the priesthood in the Catholic Church 
by the widespread, what shall I call it, the mania of priestly ministers and not ordained priests. No wonder, given what we've just said, the priest has been par excellence, identified in Catholic history as the Altair Christus, as the other Christ. Why? He, more than any other Christian, is privileged to deal on such close terms with the Savior. And let me be as clear as I can, this is one reason why the Holy Eucharist is being so widely handled by the laity, especially by the feminists. They envy, they envy, they envy the priesthood for all the reasons we've just identified. The priest must learn from Mary that just being physically close to Christ is not enough. Like her, he must also be familiar with Christ. Let's be honest. Nearness to someone is not the same thing as intimacy. This familiarity with Jesus in the priest requires the sacrifice of other intimacies, requires effort to keep one's mind on Christ, requires generosity to keep one's heart united with Jesus Christ, and requires constant prayer to obtain the grace that only the Son of Mary can give a priest to remain in contact with Mary's Son. So much for the why. Now the how. How Mary's faith teaches priests. What were the qualities of Our Lady's faith that a priest is to imitate? It was her trustful faith. It was her much tested faith that sustained the faith of others. Mary's faith was a trustful faith. At the Annunciation, Mary was invited to become the mother of the Most High. Remember, she had none of the evidences that we have of the truth of the Incarnation. We now have 2,000 years of the Church's history to bank on. We have millions, hear the word millions, of martyrs who have shed their blood for Christ to inspire us. We have the sustaining of Christ's teaching by only one authority on earth, only one, the Roman Catholic Church, for 2,000 years. But Mary had none of this to strengthen her faith. She stood all alone as the bridge between the Old and the New Covenant. A young girl traditionally 15 years old had just heard a messenger call her full of grace, and asked her to consent to becoming the mother of the Savior. 
she consented. And the second person was conceived in her womb. And the second person was conceived in her womb. But only because she had first conceived him in her mind by faith. Well, that was only the beginning. After she had conceived, Joseph, her spouse, soon discovered that she was with child. He knew he was not the father. How strange of God. God does things, hear it, and don't forget. God does things without giving us an explanation. However, also how predictable. God wants priests to be an example, example to the faithful of trusting in God's providence and not for a moment doubting what God has initiated, he will also carry through. Never, never ask God why. Never. Only two questions you should always ask of God. Lord, what do you want and how do you want me to do it? But never why. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there. And no doubt, Jesus and the disciples were invited because she was there. When they ran out of wine, Mary noticed it immediately. She told her son, they have no wine. Him, what sounds like a rebuke to his mother, she knew her son. She told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Six large stone jars were filled with water. I let to quote the poet, the water saw its maker and blushed. Faith works miracles, infallibly, but the priest must have a deep faith. We continue. Our Lady's faith was a much tested faith. It is not for nothing. Our Lady is called the Mother of Sorrows and the Queen of Martyrs. We believe that after Christ, no one, no one has ever suffered more or will ever suffer more among Christ's believers than his mother. The promise of Simeon, remember, to Our Lady, was fulfilled. And Simeon told her, a sword will pierce your soul. And the reason, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. How a priest needs to learn this hardest lesson in life from Mary. He believes he's been called to join in the priesthood of Jesus. Priesthood, he knows, means sacrifice. He must also know is that the closer a person is bound to Christ and his redemption of souls the more that person 
must expect to share with Christ in his passion. These are not words. They are born out in the lives of the great priests of history, whether canonized or known to God alone. To a man, they were priests who not only offered the holy sacrifice in the person of Christ, but offered themselves, spent themselves, exhausted themselves as part of the Holocaust of Jesus Christ. Yet, like Mary, they consider themselves blessed, which means happy, because what was promised to them was fulfilled. We share in Christ's apostolate We've been only as many souls for him from hell and for heaven as we are united with Christ in his sacrifice on Calvary. What Jesus did on Calvary, he has been doing ever since. He has confided his mother be the mother of priests. And remember, and trusted her to the beloved disciple whom he had just ordained the night before. Priests are chosen to be partners in the Savior's work of redemption to save a sinful world from its folly and bring mankind to the glories of heaven. But souls are not redeemed except by blood, either the physical blood of martyrdom or the spiritual blood of sacrifice. Mary shed her blood in spirit in union with the Divine Son on Calvary. She wants us to learn from her to do the same. Mary, Mother of Priests, we ask you, we beg you, to give your priests something of your own deep faith in Jesus Christ, your Son being the Son of the living God, so that like you, they may stand under the cross of Christ, join with him in his redemption of the world. Mary, Mother of Priests, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.